Hey guys, it's Mitchell and Zach, and today we have a, another podcast for you guys. We're going to play a little bit of a game about what makes a great or possibly flagship phone. I hope that you play along with us. Uh, we're going to have a list of the things that we're comparing up here on the screen, notes uh, in the description to where you can find Zach's channel and subscribe to it. Also, we'll have links to Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, all of your favorite podcast places will all be in the description, as well as links to my Discord server, which Zach hops in and chats with us all the time. Um, Zach, okay. first of all, how yeah. are you doing? I'm doing great, man. So I've been very busy uh, last week, so I didn't do any YouTube videos, just with um, the mining thing that we talk about. Uh, do you want to elaborate a little bit on what you're now getting into? Uh, so I'm not really one of those guys who kind of goes and buys like 10 GPUs and gamers are very but... upset about it. So I'm a gamer myself, but I started to actually use my PC while, while I'm not working on it. So I just started uh, using NiceHash, which is a, it's a mining uh, software and it's basically, uh, you know, mine for Ethereum and people mm -hmm. pay you for that. So basically there is something called uh, hash power. And mm -hmm. people pay you for that hash power. And I just started like three days ago, I guess. And it's been uh, very fun, man. It's been like exciting to see the the numbers add up for the Vietnamese dunk. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm I'm actually thinking about if I want to buy another laptop or if I want to build a desktop because... Hey, hey, man, have you seen the, those memes on, on Reddit? Like people put in like stacks of laptops for mining. It's no. really, really funny. Yeah, I'm going to send you the picture later. It's, it's okay. like it, people, are, people are actually using laptops to mine, and you can see like stacks and stacks of laptops. Crazy. That's funny. Um, but okay, so let's – we just had the Redmi K40 series announcement, um, and I, I did my whole video about why – I should hate the Redmi K40 Pro. I don't hate the Redmi K40 Pro or the Redmi K40 Pro Plus. Mm -hmm. um, but now I've realized that it's just definitely not the device for me. Do you did you follow this launch at all? No, no. So you have to tell me what's the uh, what's the specs. So in in uh, in in almost all ways, the Redmi K40. Uh, and Redmi K40 Pro and Redmi K40 Pro Plus, they are kind of like the Redmi K30 Pro mm -hmm. Plus or the Redmi K30 Pro Max, right? Um, at the low end, Xiaomi is recycling the Snapdragon 865 in the form of the 870, right? UFS mm -hmm. 3.1 LPDDR5, right? Um, so other than the SOC top line specs, but they are using a camera from the two-year-old Xiaomi K20, not even the K20 mm. Pro, the two-year-old $280 Redmi K20. It's the IMX582. It doesn't do 4K60. We'll get into why that doesn't matter, sort of, but it has the same 33-watt charging as the Redmi uh, K30 Pro, same charging tech that was on the Xiaomi Mi 9, which is now two years old. Mm -hmm. So it, a lot of this stuff is like recycled tech. A lot of this it's, is just... It's very disappointing to... Um, we did not see so far any device come with the... I mean, the stuff we saw about the Snapdragon 888 was like more about the camera, you know, advancements. Right. So, so far, we didn't see anything in, in any of those devices, right? Well, okay. So this is left up to be seen with hands-on. I'll try and go into one of the stores and get a hands-on with one of these devices. Mm -hmm. I'm probably not even going to buy it to review, to be honest with you, just because okay. I'm just so not impressed with it as a device uh in regards to like the the i the triple isps which is what you're referring to yeah uh, from the, the news chip right um the snapdragon 865 had dual isps and mm -hmm. the redmi k30 and k30 pro and k30 pro plus only have 
an ultra wide and a regular camera. They have the macro five megapixel camera, but even then on the previous generations of devices, the Snapdragon 865 can handle two streams of video at once. Mm -hmm. We know this because on my K30 Pro and on my Mi 10, I can record front and back video at the same time. So obviously there's two streams of data of video. Yeah, and, and I think that also makes it, um, you know, uh, able to do uh, HDR video, right? Because uh, it's basically like, Expose into well, different videos. Uh, on that has so no no that has to do with the total throughput. Uh, what you're referring to in regards of HDR video, if you imagine a hose, the diameter of the hose or how big that is is how much information can be put through it, right? Mm -hmm. So if it can do 4K, the reason why the iPhone can do 4K 30 HDR is because it can actually when it's re recording that it's actually recording 4K. 120 because it's it's shooting more frames higher and lower exposure etc cetera, etc cetera. the hdr is a totally separate thing in regards to i guess bandwidth the 888 is supposed to allow for three individual streams of video so that you can go between all of the different cameras and the then ultra it's, wide the standard right. and then the telephoto okay right seamlessly um but i don't have it on my xiaomi mi 10 i didn't have it on my redmi k30 I have no idea if this is, I mean, this is a software limitation uh, from Xiaomi in regards to developing for that stuff. And I haven't seen that change. So whether or not, um, and we, no one really has like a hands-on with the Mi 11 or with the K30 Pro, um, there hasn't really been much reviews of the Mi 11 focused on video. So I don't even know if the new Xiaomi devices allow you to do that smooth video switching between different cameras which why are why are we why are we buying new hardware if the software doesn't support that um yeah, it's, it seems like a waste right yeah so to, to finish up i don't want to put harp on the camera so yeah. much because we are going to talk about camera stuff more to finish up talking about the specs of the K30, uh, it's got a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, so it's 200 milliamp hours smaller than the K30 Pro, um, which is kind of a downgrade. The charging tech is the same exact charging tech, and I'm going to have a video about this charging tech because in my Discord server, we were trying to figure out why some cables work with xiaomi's turbo charging and why some of them don't it's going to be a really nasty surprise to k40 pro owners that try to go out and buy a longer cable to charge their device because it's not going to fast charge on your on a two meter cable it we tried doing this and it okay. it has to do with resistance um so the charging tech is the same the cameras are the same the camera on the Redmi K30 Pro Plus, their most high-end device, that's the camera from the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G in China. That's a $270 phone. So on your $600 top-of-the-line Redmi device, you are getting the same 8-megapixel and 108-megapixel camera, no OIS, as you are on their lower tier Redmi device. And then on the K40 Pro regular, non-Pro Plus, you're getting last year's camera. So okay. unless you really want 120 Hertz AMOLED display, the display on it is the best in class. It's one of the best displays you can buy on a phone right now. Um, is it curved? No, flat, which is okay. why flat. I really, I really, really wanted the Redmi K40 Pro Plus to pack a better camera because that was going to be my next phone. All that they oh, really? need, all the, all that they, because I'm, I'm kind of tired of the curved display, and I got a feeling that the Red, that the Xiaomi Mi 11 Pro and Mi 11 Ultra gonna are going to be curved. Yeah, and I really just wanted, I wanted. Even if the thing, the thing is that if we had the HM2 sensor from mm -hmm. Samsung, which is the sensor on the K30 Pro Plus, but we just added OIS, it would the price would have gone up, but we could have like not had a, a glass and metal build, right? 
And the eight megapixel ultra wide camera is Xiaomi's lowest tier. It's made by Omnivision. It is their lowest tier ultra wide camera, right? Their middle tier one is like 13 megapixels and usually their best ultra wide is 20 megapixels. That's the camera that's on the Mi 10 Pro. And so I'm not super impressed with the device because I'm not a uh, mobile I'm, gamer. I'm, yeah, I know what you mean, but I'm not sure about the next devices. If they there's a problem now globally, you know that with the with the semiconductor shortage. So yeah. I'm not sure if this is affecting it or no. This um, basically what yeah. in, it, this isn't a this is what this is. So the display specifically that Redmi decided for the K40 series is the Samsung E4. That's like the model name of it. And it is, I think it's the display that's in the Galaxy Galaxy S21. Um, it's a mm. flat display. It's 1300 nits of max peak brightness uh, in HDR10, which would mean mm -hmm. that it's like got the average brightness of like 1100 nits of brightness, 120 hertz refresh rate. So, I mean, it is really a flagship display, but Xiaomi just read me, just decided that they are going to spend all of their money uh, on this device on giving you the best display possible and really just make it for gamers. It's like, it's a gaming phone. Like, like okay. now, like it, if you haven't watched my video yet, I would suggest anyone watch it, but it's, it's not me hating on the Redmi K40 pro. Um, it's more about me realizing that now the Redmi K series is black shark. It black shark is Xiaomi's gaming brand. It is yeah. black shark on a budget. It's budget. It's budget black shark. The Redmi K okay. series <laughs> is budget black shark, right? It's like, we are going to put all of the money for gamers, all of the money for gamers, but it's, it's going to make compromises. It's like, it's like the budget. It's the budget black shark to get to this game now. Cause we've totally rambled on long mm -hmm. enough. Yes. We're, we're going to throw this list up on screen, but it, it's, the, the topic specifically for today's video is what makes a great phone for the average consumer. Now, this does not mean that when, when I say average consumer, I mean the, 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 the average businessman, the, the person that's, that, that wants a phone in the professional environment. Mom so, and pop. Like, right, right. Someone like you, you're not, you're, you don't film your YouTube videos on your phone. Like the camera mm -hmm. is important to you, but it's less important to you than it is to me. Cause for me, mm -hmm. I film some of my YouTube videos outside with my phone, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not the average user. You would be more the average user. Our girlfriends would be the average consumer of these devices, right? The majority of our friends would be a normal consumer for this. So not, not someone that's specifically in it for mobile gaming, not someone that's specifically in it for, for mobile photography, right? Productivity, getting stuff done, taking the occasional photo video, right? So, so let's get this out of the way because the, that is the majority of people that are buying phones right now. And the okay. things on this list for us to, to rank are, Camera, battery life. First, battery life. Soft. And th these. This is not in order, but camera, battery life, software, or hardware optimization. Now, this is a little bit different because this is getting the most out of the hardware that is available. So when we talked about the, the three streams of 4K video, Snapdragon 888, that would be the optimization of the hardware. What is the software getting out of the hardware, right? That is... Yeah. Because that is something that is comes into R and D research and development, and it comes into developing the software for the device, the APIs, the drivers, stuff like that. Um, the charging tech, as well as charging speed, SOC and components, screen, and this is this goes for uh, screen refresh rate, screen brightness, AMOLED versus LCD, right? Like this is all aspects resolution, of screen yeah. resolution, right? build quality and then software so mm -hmm. if, if you want to go and pull this list up on your side so you can see it and then i want to yes. hear 
what I already know. have it here. Okay, great. So then on on your list, um, what's your number one? What is what makes a great phone? Uh, when it comes to the camera, or for, we're talking all about things. Uh, which which one is number okay. one on your list? The most important thing. Ah, okay. The most important for me would be definitely the SOC and the components. Okay. Well, I'll, how we're... fast is it? Okay. So for you, that's number one. Okay. That's number one for you. Yeah. For me, um, I'm going. Can we talk about number two? Because like number one and number two are kind of like. You know, okay, what's number two important. for you? Um, I would say definitely uh, the camera. Okay. Uh, mostly for my girlfriend because I take a lot of pictures of her. <laughs> of I think I th I think yeah. Anyone with a girlfriend at this point is like the camera is the camera is, yeah. is really important. What's number three for you? Uh, number three would be definitely the uh, software. Software. So the software user experience yes. or the software optimization? Um, for me, those go uh, hand in hand. What you have like, to pick one that's more important. Okay. Okay, I see what you mean. Uh, I would definitely say software optimization. So getting the most out of the hardware. Yes. Okay, and then number four would be the user experience. How smooth, mm -hmm. fluid, or oh, aesthetic of yeah, it. Exactly. Bugs. Yes, yeah. the way it looks, the way it functions, the animations, everything. Okay, uh, what's number five? Screen. Uh, I feel like you're going to say screen. Yeah, the screen, yeah. <laughs> because because you're Mr. High screen. Refresh Rate. Refresh rate, yes. Very yeah. Good. Six. What's number six? Six would be uh, build quality. Build quality. You're the yeah, guy that yeah. talked about. You're the other guy that the talked about curve. wireless charging. Uh, on, yeah. on on it, and how much you loved your fast wireless charging, but you're going to put build quality above battery life and charging tech. I mean, that's a problem. Like for me, some of these things are they they go in hand in hand. Like I cannot put like this one is like more than the other. It's very hard to kind of like prioritize things, you know. Mm, I understand. Because when I make a decision, it's like everything comes in one package. I so I would say uh, with six is build quality, and then move into charging tech and speed. Mm -hmm. And the last one is battery, battery life because I don't actually care that much about having a big battery life. Right, if you if you can charge it fast, I charge it fast. Exactly. That's that's exactly the way. Yeah, yeah. It. That it's that's you and MKBHD. Like you and yeah, really. MKBHD, like have like the same exact. Um, yeah, because uh, honestly, with my with my OnePlus, like whenever, like even today, right? So I, I want to go with my girlfriend to buy some stuff, mm -hmm. and my my device was like twenty percent, mm -hmm. and I had to wait like ten minutes, put it uh, to charge wirelessly, and then after ten minutes, it was like forty five percent. So mm -hmm. that's like, oh, that I can actually go out and don't like worry about the battery life. Yeah. Okay. See, for for me. I, I gotta put camera number one for for really? myself, and so and so this is this is um, so probably that you remember that Samsung uh, camera device whatever it, that would be great for you. It well, was a camera with, uh, yes, with an Android I know, phone. I know, I know, I know. I forget, it was like the the, <laughs> Galaxy the name was Cam it like the Galaxy? It was like the Galaxy, Galaxy phone. Yeah. Gal oh, the Galaxy Zoom. It was the Galaxy Zoom, Zoom right? Or something. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> so that would be the the perfect one for you. <laughs> so I gotta, yeah. I gotta put, I gotta put camera number one on my list, um, and it's more than just for myself because I think that the camera for most consumers is the first way they compare their new phone and their old phone, and it's also the 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 number one way that most consumers compare their phone versus their friend's phone. Mm -hmm. Right. We're talking um, about the average people. Yeah. We're talking about the average consumer. Like this, this was something that like I witnessed firsthand recently when I went out to, like outside of Hanoi to celebrate Tet with a bunch of my Vietnamese friends. Um, and like, like none of them speak English, but like, after the first like few times of us taking pictures, like all of us taking pictures with our phone, everyone mm -hmm. wanted to start to take pictures with my phone, 
with G Cam okay. on my Mi 10, right? <laughs> and like mm -hmm. the first thing that people w were doing was comparing their their pictures on their iPhone 10 or whatever last generation iPhone it was, right? With the pictures on my phone, right? And it and and yeah. like and like that was immediately the first thing that people like can like, oh, this phone is better than this phone. Nothing else taken into account. But when it's nighttime and I snap a picture with my phone and then you snap a picture with your phone, your phone looks way better. And yeah. I think that for the average consumer, um, it might not be the most important thing, right? But when mm -hmm. I'm coming from a, let's say a $300 for, let's say I'm coming from a $400 semi flagship let's say i bought a galaxy s9 used like a month or like two months after it came out which you can get in vietnam a lot of vietnamese people will buy um they will buy like a last year flagship right after mm -hmm. the new one comes out because the price of them drops and it's still good hardware right yeah but if i'm coming sometimes from, it's like half the price right but so for me i'm putting camera number one for the average mm -hmm. consumer because it's usually the most tactile way that people compare new device to old device right that's what my girlfriend did when i just got my phone so i was actually trying to show her the refresh rate and she did not really care much about it she just look at you know she just like opened the camera app and she was like snapping some picture with her iphone and with mine and like oh i like yours better here i like the light in here and i was like oh i was actually trying to show you the refresh rate <laughs> and she did not really care about it like bro i but for me that's a big deal you know for you that's a big deal and i and, yeah. I, and i've tried this with friends of mine before where i i turn my phone on i usually keep my phone at 60 hertz for battery life <laughs> i turn mm -hmm. it on i turn it on to 90 hertz i give it to my friend hey how does this feel nothing yeah <laughs> okay between this and this you notice a difference and they'll usually say something like the screen is brighter or like like they'll 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 say like i, I don't know like yeah, but yeah. it something's different what do you like more i don't care like that's usually the I, response i think I like get. your eyes should be trained for it right it's the same thing with lag like i can notice lag more than my girlfriend or my sister or anybody in my family they would they, they they something happened in the screen and it's lagging i can i can i know it's lag right or it's like stuttering, but they don't have any kind of, uh, I don't know, like they, they, they don't realize what it, what it is. So mm. that makes them like, that, that makes their eyes not trained for mm. higher fresh rate or lower fresh rate. So for them, it's just, it's working. That's it. That's, it's fine. It's fine. That's what they say. It's fine. So the next, the next number two on my list, mm -hmm. and this is for the average consumer, um, and this is totally opposite of you. Number two on my list is actually battery life. Really? Yeah. So the reason why I got to put battery life number two is I have talked to a, a not just my girlfriend, not just a bunch of Vietnamese people, but just like a bunch of friends, Western Vietnamese in general. And like a lot of them just don't care about charging speed. Like, mm -hmm. like, like they, I, maybe I understand that they should care, but like most people still want to put their phone on overnight and they want the phone to last them for the day or, yeah. or, or if they have to charge their phone again, they are going to be using the phone while charging. Right. And that's my girlfriend. She's always going with her power battery bank. bank, power <laughs> bank. Right. But, and like, the thing is that even if a phone has a huge battery mm -hmm. or if it has a small battery, if it has a bigger battery, then that battery will charge at a faster rate, even if the tech is older, right? Like if I have a 4,500 milliamp hour battery and I have a 2,000 milliamp hour battery, the 4,500 milliamp hour battery will charge at, at 18 watts, right? Because as mm -hmm. soon as the smaller battery gets to that like towards like 80% full, it slows down a lot. If you have a really, really small battery cell, then it's just going to charge faster because there, there's less overall to charge, right? So if you have a 2000 milliamp hour cell, like the iPhone, it's 
you're going to see 70% of your battery, even if 70% battery life gets you three hours of screen on time. If you have a 4,000 milliamp hour cell, it's going to charge faster before it gets to that 80 watt or 80% limit that battery starts to slow charge at. Right. So uh, for me, battery life is the second most important thing because mm -hmm. in my experience, a lot of people don't care about how fast it charges, but whether or not they need to leave the house with a charger or with another source of power with like them. a power band. Yeah, exactly. Um, number three on my list has to be uh, – SSC? Actually, no. It has to be really? – oh, damn it. I got it's hard to, to pick some. some of I, them, I yeah. got to choose between SOC and software and hardware optimization because mm -hmm. when I had the older Android One phones, uh, the like the I had the Xiaomi Mi A One and the Xiaomi LG one. No, I had the Xiaomi Mi A One and Xiaomi Mi A Two, which were both stock Android, and the performance on uh, the Mi A Two with the Snapdragon 660 versus the 625 in the A1, it was tangible, but it wasn't that big of a difference, right? Because the software optimization and because Android stock Android is so light mm -hmm. on the system that the upgrade in CPU didn't change the, the, the day-to-day performance. -day performance. Much, yeah. yeah. But I, I got to go SOC and components. I got to agree with you because after I switched from a UFS 3.1 to mm – -hmm. or after I switched from UFS 2.1 to UFS 3.1. Yeah, I was surprised. Like that's, that's the latest <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big difference. Like, like so an example yeah. of this is I'm running an open source Android ROM on my tablet. My tablet just has a Snapdragon 660, nothing special. Going around the home screen and the interface is super quick and super smooth on this. Really I can device. tell that actually with, with, with the photos. So when I check the library, yeah. I can see the photos, like, yep. you know, how fast it can load. Yeah. I used to have like, a, which, which one? My old device was the Galaxy Note 5. And with I think it was UFS one point something or not even what, it, it was it wasn't that fast but it's slower yeah yeah it was very slow like for loading like photos and stuff mm -hmm. like you can see now like I'm um, like one thousands of pictures here and, and it's like, instantaneous it's so yeah exactly like boom. right and that 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 was a big thing that I noticed was the mm -hmm. jump in storage speed for opening apps and not and this is not I'm not talking about opening I'm not talking about opening games. Or mm -hmm. opening, I'm talking about just like opening Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, where where mm -hmm. the difference in it is is tangible. So maybe even less. Like I would be happy with a Snapdragon seven six eight with UFS three point one storage. I think that would get mm -hmm. us amazing performance. Apps yeah, yeah. opening, closing pretty fast, right? The only I'm not sure about the the new iPhones, but I I have the iPhone eight plus, so that's mm -hmm. my iPhone that I use now. And it's not really like a slow phone. It's it's fine, mm -hmm. but I tend to use my OnePlus Eight Pro more than my iPhone mm -hmm. when I want to, you know, use it for Grab, for example, something like that is very time sensitive. You know, mm -hmm. I tend to go for my OnePlus Eight Pro because of the speed and the. I'm not talking about the refresh uh, refresh rate. That's a different story. I'm talking about right. the uh, that getting app opening in and, in and out of apps in and out exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I just keep my iPhone for like iCloud and other stuff. And mm -hmm. basically when I'm, you know, in a time sensitive situation, I tend to use my OnePlus 8 Pro. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure about the new iPhones because I had the, the 12 Pro Max, but it did feel it's it's a bit faster than the 8 Plus, but that's, not as fast as my OnePlus 8 Pro in opening apps. I could that, see that daily. That's because, uh, uh, well, I don't know about the why opening and closing apps wasn't as fast, but the different, it uses different storage. It uses the NVMe storage. Yeah, probably. No, no, I actually does. have a video guys on, on my YouTube channel comparing the one plus eight pro and the one uh, and the 12 pro opening apps and games. You can check it out. Um, that, that would like, but I know that Apple uses a totally different type of storage. They use okay. a NVMe. NVMe. N yeah, I think so. Yeah. NVMe storage, which is, which is faster. Um, so four on my list, if three is going to be components, four on my list is going to be software, hardware, uh, optimization. 
Um, and I'm putting this number four on my list because mm -hmm. there is only so much that we can – like there's only so much support that we can ask manufacturers for in regards to getting stuff out of the device at a specific price point. And what I mean by that is that if we are buying non – premium phones that have a lower markup, there's going to be less of a budget set aside for research and development on that. If I'm if I'm buying mm -hmm. a Sam if I'm buying a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra and spending eleven hundred dollars on a phone, <laughs> I want all of that stuff there. <coughs> and with the new Samsung Galaxy S21, it actually does seem like they've gotten the most out of that hardware. You can mm -hmm. do that smooth video going between lenses thing uh, on the Samsung. You can use Bluetooth headphones as a Bluetooth microphone on the new S21 Ultra. Like there are a lot of actual function. Like the screen of it is uh, the digitizer, right? And it's got uh, specific software stuff to get the most out of the S Pen, even though it doesn't come bundled with it, right? Like this is getting mm -hmm. the most out of that hardware. Um, and you know another another area. But uh, wouldn't that be sometimes gimmicky? That's my problem with like the Samsungs. Like I switch from Samsung to to iPhone then to OnePlus, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to buy a Samsung. One of the reasons was because of those kind of gimmicky features that I always I had on my Note. I never used. Mm -hmm. They were cool to look at for one or two days to show your friends, but. Those tend to be more gimmick. I don't know how you feel about that. Like those kind of features are are not that useful for day to day in most cases. So I don't I think that a lot of that also has to do with uh usage habits. Because I had a note for I had I had a okay. note four and I had a note five for a while. Mm -hmm. And my note four I wasn't utilizing all of the S Pen features. I wasn't doing a lot with it, right? But by my Note 5, I was using it to screenshot maps and annotate stuff on maps and sending mm -hmm. it. I was jotting down notes with the screen off and 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 like I was like much more much more fully utilizing that. Um and and then like I uh, like for the they, the Samsung was one of the first ones to introduce Miracast or like some mm -hmm. type of screen casting hardware, right? And like it was a feature that I never used until I was like at a hotel somewhere and I wanted to screen cast my phone to the TV and the, it was a Samsung TV, right? you know, mm -hmm. or like I like I've had those situations where so like a great so like a great example to a great example to this. Uh, mm -hmm. would be Samsung Dex, which is the Samsung uh, the Samsung desktop emulation on Android. Mm -hmm. um, you can plug it in to an external monitor with a keyboard and you'll have like a... Yeah, I've seen that. It's very, very useful and it's uh, very responsive. Right. But like if you don't have the hardware set up, if you don't have the hardware to like use it as a laptop replacement, it's a gimmick, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, so do you think like Samsung, in, in the case of Samsung, like mm -hmm. it works better if you are surrounded in the Samsung ecosystem, like the TVs, the all the devices, because they're creating their own, their own right, ecosystem. Right, 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 right. Um, I think, ooh, that's a really good question. Without having those other Samsung devices, would that be uh, a very uh, enjoyable experience or... So you, you so good? so Sam. So the thing, the thing is that with Samsung to get out to get the most out of Dex, you just need to pipe. You just need to get HDMI over over USB C, and then mm -hmm. you can use any wireless keyboard for that. Any wireless keyboard mouse combo. It doesn't have to be the Samsung brand. Um, yeah, I know. Um, Talking about the other features that you were mentioning. for. There are some features like if you get a call on your Samsung phone and you have a Samsung tablet with a uh, uh, cellular plan, you can answer calls on your tablet. 
I, I, think, I think they had a they had a feature similar to Android uh, nearby share way before that only worked between Samsung devices. Mm-hmm. Something also that has to do with the share, not sharing, but actually expanding the speaker range. So yeah, 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 yeah. The so speaker th- of your friend for the same music, and then it's right. Like, so so that's so that's actually some. That's actually something that came baked into Bluetooth 5.0 because with mm-hmm. Bluetooth 5.0, you had enough bandwidth to cast to two speakers, but Samsung was the only company to take advantage of that extra Bluetooth 5.0 bandwidth so that you could mm-hmm. simulcast to two Bluetooth speakers. So yeah. that's what I mean about like optimizing hardware, right? Bluetooth 5.0 supports this, but Samsung right now is the only company that allows you or you and your friend to share a pair of headphones. And they are okay. So if somebody listening to you now, they would say like, "You sound more like a Samsung fan now." So why did you get a Xiaomi? <laughs> um, because I well, I don't think I'm a I, I'm a fan of Samsung tech. Okay, I see what you mean. Like I'm, no, I'm no, a f- I mean, I'll say that I don't say that. Like, I mean, like, like, like. I think, I think we really need to delineate between. Like, it's the same way I'm a fan of Apple. Yeah, yeah. Right, like Apple's got small batteries in their phones, but they get really good screen on time when they're not on 5G, according to Frankie Tech, because mm-hmm. Frankie Tech's been having terrible mm-hmm. battery life with his uh, iPhone 12 iPhone Pro S- Max. 12. 12 Pro Max in Hong Kong because mm-hmm. Hong Kong has really good 5G. He's getting like mm-hmm. four hours of screen on time, which is pretty bad the 12 that's right that's very very bad yeah Yeah. whereas the 11 pro max he was getting like eight eight and a half hours or nine hours Mm -hmm. so um i mean it's like it's the same way i'm a fan of of the tech and like what these companies are doing but i might not be a fan of the individual products uh it's never good to be a fan of any brand anyway because that's not smart Mm, yeah I, Uh, i agree um, you should be a fan of of the things that works, you know, like the, like like you said, be a fan of the tech itself, but not the brand. Yeah. So for me, number five on my list Just is going to be yeah. the same as yours, which is screen. Yeah. Um, okay. But at that at that time, I think for ninety percent of users at this point, not the people watching us or listening to us, because they're going to be tech fans, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that screen brightness way more important than screen refresh rate. I've been really? saying, I've been I saying this, agree, but anyway, I've been yeah. saying, I've been saying this for two years. I've been saying this for two, more than two years that, that the average consumer doesn't give a shit about how fast their screen refreshes. If they go to the beach and they have to, mm-hmm. and they have to do the, the shade, the phone where, hold on. But I mean, even uh, the average. Okay. Hold on, hold on. The average, the average consumer. I mean, even even with with higher brightness levels, you still gonna do that anyway. <laughs> that's but never, that's not true. With with what phone are you talking about? That you can be able to like look uh, at things clearly on the beach. And any any day. any any phone that's got over a thousand nits of brightness on the display is most of them today. Yeah. Uh, my phone does. I think your phone does. My I know phone, the, yeah. I know the new iPhone 12 Pro Max is like Mine is rated as like 1200. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, but like, okay, like, I see what you mean. Like the at like the average person cares more about like mm-hmm. this than like how fast it looks. I agree. For the average person, I do agree. Right. Um, and like, like, like you. Your girlfriend, my girlfriend, your friends here, my friends here that don't have a tech YouTube channel, right? Mm-hmm. When they you you were talking about going outside for grab, right? Part of that experience for you is being able to see your phone in the daytime outside. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And not having to do the right. I know what you mean. Yeah, like, exactly. So and that's something that and that's something that Apple has always done really well. Apple is what, what, always what, what, I was, what I was trying to say is, is like for most recent phones, that's not a problem anymore. Do you agree? No, that's not true. Flagship. Because the the Xiaomi flagship Mi, phones. The sha- flat flag what's flagship? For me, flagship top, top, is top the tier, top tier? Top tier yes, from all yes. manufacturers. From I, then I, I agree. From all of them. Then I agree. 
then I agree. All of them have really good brightness levels. I agree. The problem the problem is that people talking about the mid range, the mid range maybe the mid the mid range high end SOC phones. The Xiaomi Mi Ten has a five hundred nit LCD really? display. Really, five hundred. Wow. And it's got, but it's got 120 hertz, bro. It's got 120 okay. hertz, bro. It looks so smooth. You have, <laughs> unless you use it in person, you're never going to understand, bro. But it's so smooth. I just have to shade it when I go outside. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think it's 1200. I think, I don't think it's 500 nits. I think it's, I Maybe think it's six or seven. It's, it's more than 500 nits. I know that the Redmi, the Redmi K30 Pro had a really high nit, really high bright really 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 high brightness display like when i went from my xiaomi k20 pro to mm -hmm. my k30 pro that was one of the first things i noticed was like when really? it well when it came time for me to film a video with both screens side by side mm -hmm. one screen is that. like 80 percent brightness the other screen is like 40 percent brightness and wow. and it's it was a big difference mm -hmm. um but yeah, it so, says here it comes to uh, the peak is 600 nits for the Mi 10. Uh, yeah, the Mi 10T. Yeah. So there, there. I mean, my my friend doesn't really. My friend who puts it on his motorbike, um, and drives around, doesn't have that big of a deal with it. But 600 mm -hmm. nits isn't. It's 600 nits is decently bright. It's not super bright outdoors, but it's like decently bright. I think 500 and less, then you can have a problem. And that is the problem. Some Xiaomi displays that are higher refresh rate still have lower brightness. I didn't actually know that because I'm not really into Xiaomi phones and stuff. So People are going to hate on me for this, but that... That's true. Um, Let's move on. Next one. Okay. Uh, number six. I got to pick number six, and this is getting hard. So I said um, build quality. What about you? Build quality is going to be last on my list, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. So you don't like sh showing off your phone and stuff. <laughs> you, you mean do, do I like to do this? Do I do I like to do this thing? Yeah. Hey, bro. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, bro. Look at my shiny phone. <laughs> look at my shiny phone here. Look, bro. Build build quality is not there for me. Actually, average consumer number five for on or number six for me. I'm putting software. Really? Yeah, I I should have put software a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Um, and I and I might juggle my two software things between optimization and you and UX because one hundred percent of people that don't know anything about Xiaomi devices that buy a China phone complain about the software. 100 yeah, one of them was my friend he he bought he got the xiaomi mi 10 uh not mi 10 mi 10e is there a device called mi 10 mi 10 light mi 10 light i think wait wait a second the they, they have made so a, many names they made a mi 10t non-pro uh which one he has the se8 right oh the mi 8 se mi 8 se yeah sorry i got confused there yeah. So yeah, yeah, and it was the Chinese version, and he he really was like so mad about it. Like everything he does about Google Voice or changing the settings, broken. Is like all broken, broken. Yeah, and it kind of forces back the same settings he changed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he was like really frustrated. And then he got uh, the Mi 10 T Pro. <laughs> at the end. And and but that was the global one, right? Yeah, it was the global one. So he and was like, "Okay, it's it's not bad because now I can actually use the phone." <laughs> he could, I mean, he could have fixed that with like running custom ROMs, but the average. Uh, but he's not like too technical into that. Like average user does not ask, want that. Yeah, exactly. Average user does not want that. Um, so I don't blame him, man. Like, if you buy the phone, you 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 should be able to use it. Like, I mean, I mean, you you might say it's his mistake because it's a Chinese version, but that's the problem with Xiaomi, I guess, because. They don't make it clear that you know, no, the they do. No, 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 they, they do. do. They do. I mean, I mean, I mean, in terms your of friend, software. No, no, your friend just saw two of the same exact phones. One of one them, cheaper. one of them was was seventy dollars more than the other one, and he got the one that was seventy dollars less. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> um, and we're gonna close on that talking about yeah. the Xiaomi Mi Eleven. 
you guys yeah. need to watch this. Software for me, my thing with software is I feel like all manufacturers or most manufacturers at this point are moving more and more. Can you hear me? Are you frozen? Yeah, I can hear you. More and more manufacturers now are moving closer to stock Android. Xiaomi, Xiaomi's appearance on their phones is moving more towards stock Android, especially on their global version. Uh, Oppo, Oppo and Realme, Realme OS is, is going more towards stock Android. Ironically enough, Oxygen OS is going more towards Realme OS, like it's going further away from stock Android, whereas not, Oppo not too much, not too much. I mean, I, in in aesthetic, I should say, but and and okay, features, yeah. it's going. It's like like they're trying. They're going to eventually unify uh, Oxygen OS and Oppo's OS. Real uh, color OS. They're it's they're going to end up becoming a lot more similar, which is not mm -hmm. bad because color OS mm -hmm. being more like stock Android would 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 be great. Um, but there are, there are lots of differences between color os and oxygen os one of them is the actual like the the notification the i mean the, mm -hmm. the, the way it works the color os is 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 more inspired by ios mm -hmm. uh, but that's what i see but, in terms but, of the you know the, the whole feature set right right but, but but what i mean is that like color os right now is much more like stock android than color os was one and a half years ago yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Right? Same way MIUI 12.5 is a lot more like stock Android than MIUI 10. Mm -hmm. um, so next up on this list that for us to go, number seven for me, uh, I got to go charging speed and charging tech. Mm -hmm. That's uh, seven. Yeah, we were tied for that. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Um, and for me, if my phone's got really good battery life, then I don't need. I if it's got really good battery life, then I don't feel like I need. Um, then I feel like I don't need to to necessarily uh, have the fastest charging tech. If my phone gets me eight hours of screen on time, I'm okay with. 18 watt charging most of the time when i use fast really? charging 18 watt That's bro most slow. most of the time when i charge my phone at home or even when i go out into the real world if i need fast charging i'm using 18 watt charging i'm not using the 33 watt because it doesn't it the 33 watt is a scam it doesn't actually charge at 33 watts unless you have unless you have dual cell batteries it's you're, it's going to charge at 33 watts from like 0% to 50%. And then after that, depending upon heat, it's going to vary the amount of uh, total wattage. Are you sure about the OnePlus? Because from my experience, it's actually very fast. What, 30 or uh, 30? But the problem, yeah. OnePlus is using dual yeah. cell batteries. For the OnePlus 8 Pro or for, yes. only for the new one? No, sure? OnePlus is one using plus bro, bro. OnePlus is using dual cell batteries. I'm. It's so only with dual cell you can actually get full speed. I'm almost positive that the OnePlus Eight Pro. Because I remember they they made a big deal about the OnePlus Eight T being dual cell. Hold on, OnePlus Eight cell. Pro. OnePlus Eight Pro dual cell battery i uh it says here that yeah just uh nothing about dual cell yeah i can't see anything about battery but it, the the one I'm, it's, it's, I, I know for sure it's about the one plus at because they made a big deal about this dual battery thing um the the at was after the one plus eight bro um but that's also and because because like because uh, it's also faster, right? So the OnePlus 8T charge like you know with a wire, it's not wireless, mm -hmm. to 65 watts. So it's yeah, the one. and it, but it's also yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Here I found it. So it says here that the OnePlus 8T came after the OnePlus 8 Pro with a dual battery pack that enables 65 watt warp charge. So yeah, that's the one. It's it, but still the battery tech, the the battery charging tech that BBK phones use mm -hmm. converts the high 
watt. It converts the high voltage into mm-hmm. high watt. There's something about the way that wattage and amperage are converted. All BBK phones do that conversion at the battery or at the at the power brick. They don't do it at the phone. Okay. So there's heat that's generated by charging, and that comes with the power coming into the phone in a certain. Because I do have a fan in the in the in the wireless charger. Well, also, if you've ever used the wired charger for your phone, your wired charger, never... <laughs> your wire, your wired charger will get really hot. That would mm-hmm. actually be an interesting video for you to do because mm-hmm. it, your wired charger, the brick, will get hot. My one it doesn't have, it doesn't even have a fan, right? So. It's it doesn't need a worse fan. than the wireless one. Yeah. yeah, I mean the, the the wireless one gets a fan, so it can be less hot. Um. So that's like uh, my the eighteen. Okay, let's move on to uh, the eighteen watt versus uh eighteen watt versus thirty three watt. For me, I've only noticed a big difference in charging speed when it's cool. But as soon as as soon as we go into summertime here in northern Vietnam. And it's 28, 29, 30 degrees outside. Um, charging speeds from like 20% upwards are almost identical. And I've done videos about this. For me, it just works. Like I told you about the example today, mm-hmm. like 10 minutes gave me like 20% more. Mm-hmm. That's like, for me, it's kind of like a lifesaver. Sometimes I forget to charge my phone and like just put it down 10, 15 minutes. I'm ready to go outside. But but just a little reality check for you. You mean like the battery drain? How, how no, no, about the battery drain? No, no, your your 30 watt wireless charging is actually pushing into the device. It's actually pushing in probably closer to 25 or 24 watts because there's a mm-hmm. pretty big percentage of wasted. Yeah. Yeah, between I know what you mean, yeah. And that's between also wasted in heat. Devices. Mm-hmm. Um, so your your 30 watt wireless charging might be closer to my 18 watt wired charging. By by the way, okay. So that, I'm not sure we have to test that. So that you should test that. You should you should yeah. try because I think your phone is still compatible with Quick Charge three. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, it is. And then and I still I still never use the wired charger. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, for me, number seven was charging tech and speed. We were tied on that. And then number eight for me is build quality. Mm-hmm. I really just don't give a don't sh- care. No. Like my my Poco F1 was like plastic, fantastic. Like you could see the seams around the edges. Put in a case. I'm not talking about a way. I'm not talking only about like the the pla- I mean the the shiny phone and the aesthetics. I'm talking about the build quality in terms of durability too. Like, do you, you don't care about that? Is it I mean, like durable? I, I mean, a, a pla- a, a, I mean, you either have to go iPhone or you have to go Poco on this. Either you go stainless steel, which is like a much more premium material, right? Mm-hmm. The process of manufacturing a stainless, a phone with stainless Carbon steel. Carbon fiber is not bad. Dude, carbon fiber costs so much money for manufacturing. Yeah. Because you have to use autoclaves. It has to go in like vacuums. Like it's actual carbon fiber mm-hmm. is like a lot of work to to develop. Carbon Kevlar is cheaper. Kevlar is, is cheaper. That's another aramid fiber. Um, but like how, have, how long did you use your phone? No case. <laughs> how long did you uh, use your phone? No case. One day. <laughs> there you go. One day. Yeah, one day. Do you know how long I use my – you know how long I've used any of my Xiaomi phones for without a case? All the time? Zero days because <laughs> Xiaomi gives us a case in the box. Oh, really? uh, I got a case with, with this one too, with the no, OnePlus. In the box and you used it no case? In the box. Days. But my, my version was kind of like they gave me like a big like red box with a lot of stuff, so it was kind of like the special edition version. Ah, I'm not sure if it comes with all of them. And also, ah. they gave me the headphones with the phone as well, the the OnePlus Bullet Wireless. Uh the neckband. Yeah, the neckband. Yeah, they gave it to me with the phone. So um, I'm not sure if it's like a special edition. 
But yeah, that's yeah. This so is, the build quality doesn't matter for you. I see. Build, build. You know, if what, what, what about what I said, man? Like, forget for about durable? the aesthetics. Durable. Yeah, durability. Like, well, so the water, water resistant, uh, dust resistant, all this kind of technical stuff. Uh, okay. Forget about the. the okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the aesthetic part. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. Any phone I get, I'm gonna put a case on it. Really? Because I'm gonna try and turn around and sell it. Okay, so you want to keep it like keep it nice and, like, and not scratches and stuff. And I think so the average cons- I think the average consumer wants to protect that investment too, not because yeah. they care about selling it, but because the average consumer more often than not uh, cares about the process of setting up their new phone. Mm-hmm. Right, like like just to be clear, when when I put uh, you know build quality number six for me, it, I was really talking about the durability. What? Yeah, yeah. Um, cause have you, I, I had have you plastic phone? phones. Have you taken your phone underwater? Um, I, I, under rain, but it doesn't count. Right. Yeah. I actually use it under rain. So, but I mean, not like in the swimming pool or something. Okay. Um, and uh, I mean, like I had like plastic phones before, like Samsung phones and stuff, and you can actually like bend them very easily in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Have, I mean, like, had that experience? I mean, like, mm, I really want like a strong phone, like in that sense, durable and strong, My, not just like very plasticky. Well, I guess uh, there's a difference between materials mm-hmm. and and build. That's build quality, right? Well, materials and build it. are different. Like I could have I could have a plastic phone that's water and dust resistant. Yeah, but it's still made from plastic, so the the bending will be like worse than something made from mm-hmm. uh, has glass or like carbon fiber or okay. stainless steel. My my it's plastic po- man is my Poco. I had the, well, that thing was like built like a brick shit house. Really? Yeah, that was like the, well, that was like one of the most durable devices I've ever had. Like I, I and the, the the Nokia three three thousand something was made from plastic, right? <laughs> yeah, I you know I think that there's a difference between build quality and build materials, um, mm-hmm. but I think that most consumers are going to put a case on their phone. Unless it's an iPhone, most consumers are not going to feel comfortable going swimming with it because the iPhone has now made such a reputation of being able to just go underwater and like be totally fine that like like an Apple's made a big deal about that, right? And like they've spent a lot of money on making a phone that you can go swimming with. Um, so so I don't know if a consumer is going to choose to buy. The eleven hundred dollar phone versus the seven hundred dollar phone because they can go swimming with it. If both of the phones could be dunked into like a toilet's worth of water, let's say. But I, I know for a fact that a lot of average people actually care about the aesthetics more than the, the what you said in terms of the, the mm. technical side of like durability and stuff. Yeah, uh, I I think I don't want to like generalize, but I can see no, that no, no, I, I'm like. Even my girlfriend, for example, I mean, girls maybe have this more than boys. So I no, don't know no, no, no. No, the thing is that when people yeah, spend a lot of money, actually. when people spend mm-hmm. a lot of money on a device, they don't want to, to look like shit. Yeah, exactly. So they want to like a nice looking device. Even the colors, you can see like some trends. People go for the gold one or the rose gold. And, yeah. you know, some, some colors sell more than others. So I think aesthetic mm-hmm. is a big deal for a lot of people. But I, I also think that specifically when we talk about the iPhones, mm-hmm. the iPhone, especially here in Vietnam, is very much like a luxury good in which people now place a higher priority on how it looks. I think so, because um, for, for them, like the iPhone is like, like you said, a luxury brand or mm-hmm. I, Apple in general is a luxury brand. So when people go that way, they, they want to have a nice looking device. And you can see people go in for a lot of gold iPhones in Vietnam. It's everywhere. We could do a whole video about tech in this country and yeah, just like the difference uh, in that. Um, <laughs> but to wrap, yeah, but, uh, to, to yeah, wrap this wrap up, up. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed – I hope you guys enjoyed this little discussion mm-hmm. about what makes a great phone great for most people. Um, and let us know in, down in the comments on YouTube. Yeah. Like, I think – well, and and at actually, least, at least give us like the top three or five things that matter for you. Yeah, or or you, just, you could just write the list like that we have in mm-hmm. in the comments. Um, yeah, that, that's going to be fun. Um, because I think that 
I think that hearing from more people would give us a better idea. Um, obviously, yeah, our results are going to be a little bit skewed because mm-hmm. we're we're a tech podcast. But yeah, even our uh, even the, the people going to watch this video, they're not really average people, right? So uh, yeah, of course not. Uh, yeah, but okay, but it's it's funny to talk about this. Uh, just one thing: like, have you seen the MKBHD like uh, photography test? For of course, phone? of course, and it's know. it's really really interesting to see that because like you know like we we keep talking about the camera specs and all of this. But the average people, like especially on Twitter, they do the, the voting, mm-hmm. and uh, most people go for the the things that they can see, like brightness mm-hmm. or color, temperature, which is uh, not what the most tech people care about. So mm-hmm. there's always like a big contrast between the average person and what the enthusiast people care about. So mm-hmm. keep that in mind. Great. Well, till next time, guys. Uh, it we've we've enjoyed this. And I hope you guys subscribe. Right, see you guys. Have more podcasts.